Go on, you'll go. Go and give him no pressure as well. On behalf of Callum and Shannon, I'd like to welcome you all to the Orangery, which has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriage. You have all been invited here to celebrate with Callum and Shannon, to witness their marriage and the promises they will make to one another. Who presents Shannon to be married to Callum? I do. Well done. Thank you. You may take your seat. <laughs> Callum. Do you take Shannon to be your lawful wedded wife? Do you promise to not only be her husband, but also her best friend, to be loving and faithful to her for the rest of your life? Yeah. Yes, I do. Shannon, do you take Callum to be your lawful wedded husband? Do you promise to not only be his wife, but also his best friend, to be loving and faithful for him? To the rest for the rest of your life. I do. With this ring. With this ring. I join my life with yours. I join my life with yours. All that I am. All that I am. I give to you. I give to you. And all that I have. And all that I have. I share with you. I share with you. I promise to respect. I promise to respect. And cherish you. And cherish you. And be faithful always. And be faithful always. Well done. With this ring, with this ring, I join my life with yours. I join my life with yours. All that I am, all that I am, I give to you. I give to you. And all that I have, and all that I have, I share with you. I share with you. I promise to respect. I promise to respect. And cherish you. And cherish you. And be faithful always. And be faithful always. And it now gives me the greatest pleasure to announce that you are now married. Right.
Firstly, I'd like to thank everybody who has traveled for tonight, places Poland, Texas, and all parts of the country, despite the rail strikes, to make Shannon and Callum's special day. A special thank you goes to Callum's family, who have looked after her. When Shannon was born, she had the boots, skinny legs, and red blotches. And she got the nickname of Corn Beef Legs. <laughs> it was obvious from the early years that Shannon was more interested in climbing trees, playing football, than playing with dolls. Shannon always gave 100% in whatever she did. So when Shannon was taken to school as Anne's, we had post-it notes all over the house, even in the bathroom. So when she found out she got into Plymouth Uni, me and Fran were so proud of her. After living in Birmingham and Milton Keynes, she finally settled in London where she met Callum. I first met Callum on a wet Friday night in Stratford. Not sure what I was expecting, but when Shannon told me he was a copper, I was thinking, I was thinking six foot, 13 stone. <laughs> yeah, I got that wrong, didn't I? You know what I mean? Callum, she's all yours now. You have one of the most precious gifts me and Fred have. Look after her. Treat her well. I wish you all, both, all the happiness in the world. And now I'd like everyone to raise a glass to Shannon and Callum and wish them a life filled with joy, love and happiness. Callum and Shannon. Just to reiterate what... Uh, oh, I mean. <laughs> just to reiterate what Andy said, um, I'd just like to start off by think, thanking everyone for turning up today um, just to celebrate this magical day. And please can I ask everyone to raise a glass. Again, I said there would be a few toastings. To Fran, Andy, Kim, Gavin and Sarah. My gorgeous wife. So we've been playing this day for one and a half years now and it's finally happened. Well... I say we, but mostly Shannon did most of it. I used my impeccable charm and great chat-up lines, as many of you know, <coughs> to get her to agree to go on a date with me. We had our first date in Stratford, and as cliche as it sounds, I knew she was special from day one. <coughs> from there we hit things off, and by the sixth day I said I loved her, which was met by a blank stare and the words, I like you too. <laughs> <laughs> to say that I was embarrassed would have been a bit of an understatement. Demoralised probably describes it a bit better. And I had to wait two weeks for her to say it back to me. So, Shannon, thank you for getting back. <laughs> when it came to proposing to Shannon, I was a bag of nerves. We were waiting rows with everyone, waiting for me to ask the question. I took her out onto the balcony of our room, ready to ask her to be my future wife. However, the nerves got the better of me, so I decided to point out every easy jet and Ryan airplane flying over us. <laughs> After weirding, weirding Shannon out for about two, ten minutes, I finally got down on one knee and asked a question, after fumbling the ring four times and then put the ring on the wrong finger. <laughs> Smooth. I honestly do not know where I'd be without you. Every day I think to myself how lucky I am to... <laughs> how lucky I am to, <laughs> view, to see that beautiful smile of yours after a bad day. To you, Shannon, I promise to be the hug at the end of a tough day, your shoulder to cry on the person who will always be at your side through the good and the bad. We only get one life and we never know how long <laughs> how long we'll be around for, but I'm lucky to have found you so soon in my life. I'm so proud to have you by my side. I cannot wait to build our future together, our family together, and spend the rest of our lives together. Shannon, you are my soulmate, my rock, and now my wife. I will love you forever and always, my heart is yours. Well the end. Um, I'm the best man, if you hadn't guessed. Um, whilst I've always needed someone to keep an eye on me, yeah, he's been my best mate for 15 years. We've always been pretty, uh, pretty close. We've plenty to talk about, texting pretty much every day. I want to thank him for being there when I needed him, but he's the happiest and most content I've seen him in a long time. And that's down to you. So uh, everyone raise a glass for the bride and groom. Cheers. Thank you. Surrounded.
Thanks for joining. Thank you.